With the stock market hitting new record highs, particularly with tech stocks, we can be rest assured that everything is okay. The market is forward looking, just like back in let's say 1940. Just look past the next 5 years and no need to worry about what happens in between, right? The Fed is not saving the markets. There is no rescue. Sadly, the ignorant are multiplying rapidly as the foul stench of arrogance fills the air here in 2020. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we're going to look at what's happening in the economy. I'm going to show you what's happening with the jobs. Some very interesting things here to discuss. I also want to look at what's going on with the Federal Reserve. There has been some details that have changed recently. I want to give you an update on that. So let's begin. In 2020, we have seen a swift and massive shock that has caused the broadest collapse of the global economy since 1870, despite the unprecedented government support. That's according to the World Bank. We have seen statistic after statistic that has simply fallen off a cliff. In some of the stats, we have actually seen it climbing upward. We'll see where that goes. Of course, it's just a little bounce at this point. If that trend continues on, then we know that we have hit the bottom and we're on the way back up. One month's data is certainly not enough. But as the economy reopens, it's the speed of the reopening. And of course, with 70% of the economy in the US being based around the consumer it depends on them. The world economy is expected to contract by 5.2% this year. That's the worst recession in 80 years. But the sheer number of countries suffering economic losses means the scale of the downturn is worse than any recession in 150 years. So understand what we're seeing here. Previously, you know, you'd have a recession in some places, let's say 30 years ago plus, you would have something going on in Asia, but the US wouldn't be affected as much by this situation. And then you would have something going on in Mexico or something going on in Russia. This didn't happen all synchronously, but today that's not really what's happening. We, we are seeing it all together all at once, okay? That's the way it's going. This is very clear because of globalization, because of the interconnectedness of financial markets and the economies, and you cannot simply change that at this point. It can't be unraveled without creating some sort of upheaval. This is a deeply sobering outlook with the crisis likely to leave long lasting scars and pose major global challenges. So of course they get into more detail here. The World Bank is, you know, you could say what you want about the institution, but certainly this is an accurate assumption of what we are seeing as the data has been coming through and where it will end up. The institution that officially defines a recession is NBER. And if you remember what happened during the financial crisis, they were one year late. They were one year late on determining when it began. And that is an embarrassment, but check this information out. It's referring to this one right now. The unprecedented magnitude of the decline in employment and production and its broad reach across the entire economy warrants the designation of this episode as a recession, even if it turns out to be briefer than earlier contractions. So they get into more details here, but essentially what I wanted to bring out was the fact that last time it took a year to for them to actually declare, okay, this is official. This time around, it's happening right away. Now, does it necessarily mean that they're the be all end all that they can say whatever they want and it's official? No, but we know the case. We know how this has been working here. We know the declines and we could see how severe it has been. We are, of course, waiting for this V shaped recovery that has happened with stocks, but of course, looks rather unlikely for the economy. What we've been seeing, of course, with the defaults has only just begun. This article gets into some of that. Retail landlords are sending out thousands of default notices to tenants, a situation that could tip already ailing retailers into bankruptcy or total collapse. There have been many examples of this. We've been seeing this time and time again. Of course, even the Gap company has not been paying their rent. You could suggest they will and that, you know, they're going to court for all of this and it's all going to be thrown out and who knows what's going to happen. But we know that 
the amount of bankruptcies, the amount of defaults, the amount of companies that are going under right now is escalating. Department stores, restaurants, apparel merchants, and specialty chains have been getting the notices as property owners who've gone unpaid for as long as three months lose patience. The default letters from landlords are flying out the door. Of course, we know what's going on. The commercial real estate is getting pounded right now. And with the majority of these companies doing work from home scenarios, that doesn't look very good for what we're seeing with commercial property. Now, we actually have seen, if you look at the CMBS, commercial mortgage-backed securities, there was the big short two that was placed here, expecting that these would become worthless as more and more people move out of the malls. And you have a big problem with that, of course, picking up with the online retailers and the fact that there's just too much retail in general that hasn't really worked out yet as a trade. But this right here could be the final nail in the coffin. We'll see. U.S. sees most bankruptcy filings year to date since the financial crisis. The market doesn't care about this information. Of course, all they're worried about is the liquidity provided from the Federal Reserve. But regardless, if you want to know it, here's the information. I got a couple more. Here we're looking at the bankruptcies in the U.S. You can see how they have been expanding. That shouldn't surprise anybody if you've been following this data. We know exactly what's going on. And this is affecting businesses. This is affecting individuals. We know that it is widespread. And you know very well that it isn't just the United States. Because this has been such a broad recession and collapse, if you look in some categories, this doesn't necessarily mean that we can focus on one area and resolve this very quickly. It has to come from a whole bunch of different sectors and it is simply impossible to print a whole bunch of money and resolve it. Chapter 11, corporate bankruptcy filings recorded in May of given year. And it looks like we have not seen this being higher, at least on this chart going back to 2011. That's not very good, of course, considering the fact that this has only just begun. This comes out of Bloomberg. You could see month of May sees the most large U.S. bankruptcy filing since 2009. I know that what we're looking at here is simply going to be an issue as time goes on. As I said, not just for the U.S., but others as well. NASDAQ closes at an all-time high, Dow less than 7% off its records as Wall Street looks for the Fed to keep support intact. Of course this is what they want. Everything would be falling apart right now. It would be looking a lot like the economy and instead the stock market continues to go up all because of the Fed. Federal Reserve makes the sun come up in the morning. The Federal Reserve began QE4 unofficially back last year, September 17th, this all began. And of course, the market started to love it right away. Of course, any additional stimulus on any level is positive for the markets. They love it. Check this out. I was giving you daily updates on what was happening with the repo operations. In fact, I was doing it so often, I had multiple comments telling me to stop it. I know I lost a few subscribers because of it, but regardless, it was so integral to what we saw leading into 2020, so I knew it was important to cover. Look at this. I'm going to scroll through really quickly just to give you an update. This has actually increased. So we have seen a time in which the repos were not getting used as much, and that was actually a problem because they really wanted the liquidity to go in before they started doing uh, crazy QE5 as they've been doing right now. They wanted it, but they just didn't have the uptake. Now that's changing because it is increasing. Could that mean that there is more of a requirement for the liquidity despite everything that's been pumped in? Are they actually seeing the same problems that were occurring in September of 2019 right now? Well, I don't know what's going on internally in the system, but certainly we'll, we'll be tracking it here and I'm going to see if this trend continues. So you're looking at in this example here, 67 billion, 53 billion. A lot of these are one day, but some of them go beyond that. You know, you could see uh, in this case here, the very top, it looks like 
the calendar days being 29 and term of operation 20 day. There's all sorts of different uh, lengths and so on. This one is $106 billion, 56, and the list continues on and on. And you could see it in this chart form where we look at overnight repo versus the QE5, and things have really, really changed. That's for sure. Looking at the blue line, that's the overnight repo operations, which recently have definitely been picked up, as you can see. But things have changed with the Federal Reserve buying less and less treasuries. The last time I checked, it was four, excuse me, I'm getting used to typing in trillion because that seems to be a normal number now, $4 billion a day of treasuries. And while historically that's ridiculously high, compared to where they were before, it's looking quite low. Now, this could change at any minute. I'm just tracking the progress. And this, regardless, any sort of liquidity that they provide is positive for the markets in the short term. It's destructive to the currency. And we know because of the Federal Reserve, what they've done with reserve requirements at zero. Re reserve requirements right now are zero. What does that mean? They can do anything they want. The financial establishments can do anything. They do not need to keep reserves. And this is a very, very dangerous time. It is, in fact, the hyperinflationary possibility, not necessarily right now, with all of the world doing the exact same thing, this becomes a very, very dangerous policy. The Federal Reserve isn't the only one that's been pumping it up. You could see the U.S. budget gap more than double in May, pushing the deficit for the fiscal year to near $2 trillion as federal revenues plunged and government spending soared. This will go on. It will continue. They will expand it as far as they want to. There is no limitation, but we will see taxation going up. Taxes will rise and they will not rise on just one group as they consistently tell everybody, oh, don't worry, the rich are going to pay for it. Everybody will pay. I thought this was interesting. Brooks Brothers seeks financing for potential bankruptcy as it continues sale process. With so many people working from home and with the trend going to be, at least for the foreseeable future, a lot of work from home, even for the people that do go into work a few days a week, perhaps, the need for people wearing these suits and these uh, nicer clothes potentially doesn't really look good for having so much retail. There's going to be a reduced need for this. And as a result, companies like this are not going to do so well. Men's warehouse owner wears ways bankruptcy filing. And this is yet another one. There are so many examples like this. Same situation. Just wanted to show you it's not one particular company, but many in fact. Really quickly, to finish off the video, I try to bring you information from all over the world when I can get it. In this case here, German industrial production month over month plummeted, minus 17.9. That just shows you what's been happening recently. They are telling us that things are going to get better. We'll see what happens. But on a historic level, globally, right now, the data has never looked worse. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please hit that thumbs up button. When you do, you're supporting me. I want to thank you for that. If you want to check me out on Instagram and Twitter, you can do so at The Money GPS. If you want to learn how to sell online, you can do so for free, not a penny paid, at the AmazonGPS.com. If you want to learn about the history, the information that is not available to you in the general mainstream, I wrote about it in these two books. You can get them at the link in the description. If you're interested in the audiobook instead, themoneygps.com. Okay, wait a second. Hold on. Don't go anywhere. Have you seen this video? If you haven't, please click on it. I'll see you there.